Hi friends, I'm Pastor Randy, and I'd like to share a Bible study with you. I'll be reading from Luke chapter 5, verses 1 through 11. Now, so it was, as the multitude pressed about him to hear the word of God, that he stood by the lake of Gennesaret, or the Sea of Galilee, and saw two, two boats standing by the lake, but the fishermen had gone from them and were washing their nets. Then he got into one of the boats, which was Simon's, and asked him to put out a little from the land. And he sat down and he taught the multitudes from the boat. Now, when he had stopped speaking, he said to Simon, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. But Simon answered and said to him, Master, we have toiled all night and caught nothing. Nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the net. And when they had done this, they caught a great number of fish and their net was breaking. So they signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and they filled both the boats so that they began to sink. When Simon Peter saw it, he fell down Jesus on his knees saying depart from me for I am a sinful man for he and all who were with him were astonished at the catch of fish which they had taken and so also were James and John the sons of Zebedee who were partners with Simon and Jesus said to Simon do not be afraid from now on you will catch men. So when they had brought their boats to the land, they forsook all and followed him. They followed Jesus. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. I've been doing a Bible study based on a new series called The Chosen which is uh, a video series based on the life and ministry of Jesus. It's one of the best I've ever seen and I recommend it highly. But in episode four, Peter and Andrew are in desperate need to make a big catch. They have debts, they owe taxes, and they, they just need they need a miracle. They really do. And in the series, that's when Jesus comes to the shore. And he approaches, as he's teaching, he, he gets in Simon Peter's boat and then asks Simon to go out a little ways and let down the nets. Simon argues with him. It's no use. It's no use. We've, we've, caught all, we've fished all night and caught nothing. But Jesus, with that look, urges him, and Simon obeys, lets down the net, and there is so many fish. The joy in their face, and the joy in Jesus' face, as I watched the episode, just it, it just warmed my heart. The miracle that Jesus performs, Jesus came through at just the right time. Jesus loves to do that for you and for me as well. And I hope that you'll see through this Bible study that we have a Jesus who's there for us to provide and help us in whatever situation or circumstance we find ourselves in. Let's put ourselves in, in Simon Peter's place. If you had been Simon Peter, when Jesus asked him to let down the net for a catch, what would your response have been? <laughs> Peter made up an excuse. We've toiled all night and, and caught nothing. Would that have been your response? Maybe. I mean, at this point, I don't think Peter knew a whole lot about Jesus. 
we might have come up with one of our own excuses, don't you think? Or maybe like Peter, gone ahead grudgingly. <laughs> and then found out by the miracle that Jesus performed, who Jesus is. That's really what he wanted to tell. The, he wanted the, the disciples to understand who he was. That he was the Messiah. He was their Messiah. He was the, the one they'd been waiting for and hoping for. He was the hope of Israel. He was the hope of their hearts. And that's who Jesus is for you and me today. Let me ask this question. Jesus told him to go out into the deep and let down the nets. What does that little phrase say, mean to you? Go out into the deep water. Sounds a little scary, doesn't it? And a lot of times God calls us to do things that are out of our comfort zone. That might seem a little scary. That we might have to take a risk. And everything in us cries, no, I don't want to. But remember what Peter said. Okay, at your word, I will. And I hope that will be our response to you. I'll do what you want me to, Jesus. I can't do it in my own strength, in my own help, but I can I can do it if you if you're there with me, if you will help me. We know that Jesus has promised to be with us and help us do whatever he calls us to do. Sometimes in my life, I need a little kick in the pants to get going. I think of Jonah when God called him to go to Nineveh. He ran the other direction, but God gave him a little kick in the pants, didn't he? As he sent a storm when he was out in the, in the boat. There's another boat. <laughs> he was running from God, but God was faithful to him. Sometimes I think I need to, as I, as I answer God's call, I, I need to get myself together first. I know God is patient with us. But sometimes God just says, go, do what I ask. Sometimes when God calls us, we might think, oh, I need to get my life cleaned up before I can work for God or, for, or do what he asked me to do. But you know what? Jesus says, come to me just as you are. I'll ter take care of the dirt. I'll take care of the sin. I'll get rid of it as far as the east is from the west. I'll separate your sins from you. They'll be forgiven and taken away. You know, all God wants is our availability. He doesn't necessarily want our abilities. He wants our availability. Then he can take that availability and use it for his glory and praise. Well, there are some promises that we can claim whenever we're feeling a little bit uh, overwhelmed with what God is asking us to do. <clears throat> Nehemiah verse eight, or chapter eight, verse ten says this: "This is the this day is holy to our Lord. Do not grieve, for the joy of the Lord is your strength." And I've learned in my own life that sometimes happy leaves but the joy of the Lord never leaves me and I find strength in that joy because Jesus is that joy now in this segment of episode 4 I hope you get to see it I'm going to put a little link uh, on my Bible study playlist where it will lead you to it if you have time I hope you hope you watch it but in this segment of episode 4 of the chosen Jesus is teaching from the lake shore and uh, he tells the disciples he shares a parable with them parable of the fishing nets and I think it's only fitting that uh, he would tell them this parable saying that uh, he is 
just after this, going to call his first disciples, Peter and Andrew, James and John. And in this parable, Jesus talks about a net being cast. Now, you may find it hard to relate to uh, a net being cast into the water because today only commercial fishermen use nets. But Jesus is referring to a large, heavy net with weights, and when it's cast and drugged through the water, it will gather many fish. Some of the fish are desirable and some are undesirable. The good fish are saved and, and taken to market and the bad fish are disposed of, thrown away. Jesus tells them this parable because he's going to call them to be fishermen for people. And there are, people are like that too. Some will respond to the message of Jesus and be gathered in and others will reject Jesus and be thrown into outer darkness, he says. And he is calling us, not just Peter and Andrew and James and John, to be fishermen for people, but he is calling you and me to be a fisherman for people. Jesus wants to use your sphere of influence. You have, an in, you have a circle of people that you influence every day. He wants to use that sphere of influence for his glory. He wants to reach those people for himself. And he wants to use you to do just that. And you may say, well, I don't know how to do that. I don't have those abilities. Remember what I said? He doesn't want your ability. He wants your availability. And he can use you. There are people for you to reach. There are people for you to love for Jesus. And you can make a difference. Jesus can make a difference in the lives of those that you know and love and you, the ones that you will meet as he uses you to drag that net for his glory and praise. You say, it's impossible. How can it be? There's an acronym that I've come to love over the years. It's the acronym FROG, F-R-O-G. That's why I got my hat today. I don't know if you can see that on there. It says, fully rely on God. And there's a little frog. You say it's impossible? Not if you fully rely on God. All things are possible through him. You can be used of God. You can be in ministry just like the disciples were in ministry. You can catch people and love them into the kingdom for Jesus' glory and praise. And that's what I hope that you will understand through this Bible study tonight. You can be used by God. He wants your availability for that purpose. Oh, I hope that the miraculous catch of fish that was seen in Luke chapter 5 can be repeated over and over and over again until Jesus comes. That is my prayer. Let me have a prayer with you. Heavenly Father, thank you for this time. And I pray that your blessing would be upon each one that hear these words, that, that hear this Bible reading and study Lord, that you would receive glory and praise because we know what you can do through one yielded and obedient life. We see that through Peter, Andrew, James, and John, and the disciples, and then on and on and on. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for what you're going to do. In his name we do pray. Amen. Thank you so much. God bless you, and we'll see you soon.